Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In a recent video, renowned investor Jim Rogers shared his insights on the current state of the U.S. economy, highlighting the signs that indicate a potential end to the longest period of economic expansion in history. Rogers delves into the challenges posed by inflation, rising interest rates, and the prolonged expansion fueled by extensive government borrowing and spending. As he cautiously observes the market dynamics, he also emphasizes the complexities of navigating these uncertain times and the need for strategic investment decisions. Jim Rogers starts by acknowledging the historical significance of the ongoing economic expansion in the United States, which has set a record for its duration. However, he warns that the signs of an impending downturn are evident, citing the surge in interest rates, inflation, and the existence of bubble stocks. While recognizing the signs of a market bubble, Rogers acknowledges the difficulty of accurately timing its burst. He explains that bubbles, especially towards their end, tend to persist longer than rational expectations, making it challenging for investors to decide the optimal moment to sell short. Rogers discusses the role of government in sustaining the economic expansion through extensive money printing, borrowing, and spending. He expresses concern about the long-term consequences of such practices and questions the sustainability of running a country solely on borrowed money. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. The U.S. economy has had the longest period of expansion without a recession in history certainly in recorded history anyway. So if you ask me just by history or time, it's coming to an end. I see the various signs. You see interest rates going, inflation going higher, interest rates going higher. Some stocks go up every day, some bubble stocks. I mean, you see the all uh, classic signs, which I have seen before, which everybody's seen before, that this is nearing the end. I'm not selling short yet. Um, I have a huge amount of cash, but I'm not selling short because bubbles, especially the end of a bubble, can go on for longer than anybody expects, certainly longer than any rational person expects. And that seems to be what's happening now. But part of the reason for that is the American economy has been expanding. The government has printed huge amounts of money, has borrowed, oh my gosh, borrowed huge amounts of money and spent huge amounts of money. So, you know, Jimmy, if you give me a trillion dollars, I'll show you a good time. They're showing us a good time at the moment. But you should be, I am worried, you should be worried too. To run a country, what an easy way to run the world. Just borrow huge amounts of money and everything will be fine. But right. If you think that's going to go on forever, and as you rightly point out, it has been going on for a long time in the U.S. The U.S. became a debtor nation in the late 1980s. Well, that's over 30 years ago. Debt has been piling up higher and higher and higher ever since. And so, so far, the politicians look out the window and say, don't worry. We've had debt forever. We can live with it. It's good news, if you believe them. Just being on cash is not that simple. You may remember in 2007, there were some smart people in Europe who saw that things were going to be bad, so they sold out, put all their money in cash. They put their money in Icelandic krona because it was yielding, it had a high yield. Of course, they got wiped out because Iceland collapsed and they, they lost everything or lost a lot of money anyway. So. It's not that simple just being in cash. It's not just that simple putting your money somewhere else. So I hope you have the answer. At the moment, I have a lot of U.S. dollars. And the reason I have U.S. dollars is because when there's turmoil throughout history, people look for a safe haven and people think the U.S. dollar is a safe haven. It's not, but they think it is. So therefore, I have a lot of U.S. dollars. I hope I'm smart enough that if and when things happen if we have a big runoff and everybody puts their money in dollars out of panic i hope i'm smart enough to sell my dollars then where will i put them oh my gosh what a smart question i don't know that's a problem with a significant portion of his portfolio in u.s dollars rogers explains that during times of turmoil investors often seek safe havens 
Despite highlighting the misconception about the US dollar being a true safe haven, he admits to holding dollars due to the prevailing perception. However, he remains cautious and ponders the dilemma of where to allocate funds if and when the dollar loses its appeal. Rogers identifies commodities, particularly silver and gold, as historically attractive assets during uncertain times. While refraining from buying gold at its current high, he expresses a preference for silver, considering it comparatively cheaper on a historic basis. Agriculture also emerges as an attractive real asset. Dismissing the notion of gold being a magical investment, Rogers points out that there have been periods in history when gold was not a reliable haven. However, he acknowledges the psychological comfort that precious metals provide during times of crisis. You would think that the Chinese renminbi would be the new competing currency, but it's not a convertible currency, so that's an absurd thought. Uh, I don't know where to put it. I do own, uh, I own some silver. Yes, I, I own some gold. I have for decades. I'm not buying at the moment, certainly not gold. Gold is making new highs. If I were buying one today, I would buy silver because it's so much cheaper on a historic basis. Agriculture is certainly probably the most attractive of real asset of commodities at the moment. I own uh, agriculture. Uh, it's complicated these days. If you look around the world, stocks are near their all-time highs in most countries. Bonds, of course, have been in a bubble. Don't want to buy bonds anywhere. Property in many countries is and has been a bubble. So the only thing that I know that's still cheap are saying things like commodities. Silver is down 60% from its all-time high. Sugar, sugar is down 60% from its all-time high. So the only assets that I know that are still historically cheap are commodities. If you go back in history, and, and certainly the gold bugs tell you gold is holy. It's magic. You know, gold is not holy. It is not magic. There have been many periods in world history when gold has not been a good place to be. Um, that's my simple explanation. And part of my explanation is gold is at an all-time high. It's not as though gold has not been doing anything. Uh, gold has never been this expensive before in history. So some people realize what's going on in the world. I, I do not buy the thesis that gold is magic, but I do know that when things go wrong, all of us peasants want to have some gold in the closet. We want some silver under the bed. And I'm an old peasant. I know how, I know how us peasants think. If you know a good gold mine, a good gold miner, by all means, a good producer, you can make a vast fortune. You will make more if you, if you know a company which is going to find gold in Berlin, you should buy all you can, buy all the shares you and then send me an email. I want to buy it too. The problem, I don't know if you remember Mark Twain. He was an American writer over a hundred years ago. Anyway, Mark Twain once said, the definition of a gold mine, a gold mine, is a hole in the ground with a liar standing at the top. So you have to be careful when you buy gold mines, gold companies, gold producers, as Mr. Twain found out. You know, it's not that easy. I wish it were. We could all be rich. Jim Rogers reveals his investments in energy-related assets, including energy ETFs, oil, and uranium. He notes the global trend of depleting known reserves of oil and emphasizes the gradual transition to alternative energy sources, which may take time. As signs of market hysteria become more pronounced, Rogers expresses his desire for a clear signal to exit certain investments. He reflects on the difficulty of timing markets accurately and draws parallels with historical patterns, such as the strength of the market in the year before a U.S. election. Looking beyond the U.S. market, Rogers explores opportunities in countries like China, Japan, and Uzbekistan. While acknowledging the historical cheapness of Chinese shares, he emphasizes the need for cautious investment strategies in diverse global markets. Gold, gold is at all-time highs. Silver's down 60% from its all-time high. That doesn't mean it cannot go down further. Of course it can. But on a relative basis, if I were buying today, I would buy silver because it's cheaper historically. I own an energy ETF, yes. Um, I mean, whether we like it or not, 
the world is running out of known reserves of oil. Yes, there's alternatives coming, there are substitutes coming, etc. But those things don't happen overnight. Maybe one day I'm going to look out the window and see windmills everywhere or solar panels everywhere. But those days are not here yet, and it's going to take a while. So alternative energy and energy, natural gas, oil, things like that. Sure, I own some uranium. Uh, there are various and sundry ways to play real assets. There will come a time, I hope, when I will see that it's just t total hysteria in the markets. Things are already going, some stocks are going up every day. It's getting narrower and narrower and narrower every day, which is always a classic sign. We're coming to the end, but I don't know. Uh, I wish I was smart enough to know how to time markets. If you go back historically, you see that every year before an election in the U.S., the market has been strong. And that's because everybody knows there's an election next year and all the politicians are doing their best to get everybody happy and, you know, satisfied. That's just a historic fact that politicians in Washington and in the state capitals are doing their best to make everybody happy because there's going to be an election next year. They know it too. This has happened. I think if you go back historically, you will see that every time it, there's a year before an election in the U.S., the market has been a good market. I don't see many Uzbekistan I have made, started making investments in because of major, I hope, major dramatic positive changes taking place. But it's not all, you can't put too much money into Uzbekistan yet. You will be able to. I, you know, as I look around the world, Jimmy, I don't see many places that are still cheap. China is cheap on a historic basis. I have some Chinese shares, so I'm, I'm looking. I haven't found anything recently. Uh, the Japanese market is probably going to go back to all-time highs. You know, it made its all-time high in 1990. That is not a typo. 1990. Been that long since the Japanese market was at its high. Unfortunately, I sold my Japanese stocks a week or two ago because they went up so much. But I don't, I mean, I presume that one can still make money in Japan. I mean, not me, I'm out, but Japan, China, Uzbekistan, but there are not many places in the world where I see opportunities in stocks.